Okay, hello everybody, this is Bodrich and this is where we will take this game today. Well, now it looks messed up here to small terminal. Let's do that. There, here is the game, Snake. As you can see now, beautiful ASCII art here, a banner. Uh, we got some borders that I cannot move outside of. We got the player character, we got the apple. So this video, uh, all I've added is like these graphics and also made it so that there is now a, a border that uh, around the field here. And notice also that it's centered in the terminal uh, and uh, yeah, that, uh, these are the things we will do here. The nice thing with doing it this way is that we can very easily uh, modify our level here. This is like a level editor. You see P here is player in the bottom left corner. If I would change, uh, move the P to some other location, it will immediately appear there uh, in our game. That's one thing we could do. We could also very easily add more UI elements here. Maybe we want to add like a score or something here, you know, and then maybe life. I don't know. Now we got that uh, information immediately here. We can very easily extend our, our UI and, and, and things on our game. And the borders still work, you know. Now, now the borders have actually changed position, but it kind of magically uh, understands uh, the box. Uh, and that is these S and E uh, characters here, marking the, the top left position and the bottom right position, the start and the end position of uh, our play area. Whatever, let's take it from the start or from the, yeah, uh, let's do this. Uh, there, now we have removed all those changes. So we begin by creating, or we can also look at the game here now, how it looks. Uh, where we left off in the left last video, we just have this. Uh, it's uh, we don't have any borders, we don't have any other graphics, and if I move the character to the left here, it will start moving to the right after a while because it inverts the axis and axis and stuff. And yeah, we need the borders. Uh, I like to, to do this. Create a function called play area. Maybe we can come up with a better name uh, another day, but. Let's call it play area for now. And then I create a local variable for this function called scene. I set the content of that variable to be the content of a here document that I write like this. So cat double left pointing angle bracket and then the marker where uh, uh, that uh, will mark the end of the here document you add that as the argument here to this here document starting thing uh, and everything up until that marker and the marker have to be the only thing uh, on that line so this uh, will mark the end but if i added a space here th this will not be a valid marker for this uh, here document and it will continue to add everything here. And same goes for this doesn't work either, you know, and this doesn't work either. So it's important, only the marker here, but the marker, it doesn't matter what it, what it's called. So it could be called uh, uh, here and, you know, that, that also works, but it just have to match, whatever. But I like to use EOB, end of block. A lot of people use EOF, end of file, it doesn't matter. Uh, what do matter are these single quotes. Uh, it would work without them, but uh, if you don't use single quotes, uh, the single quotes are, are works like single quotes around a string, you know. Uh, so double quote var, that would mean that scene here would contain the value of the variable var. But if I put this in single quotes, then the value of scene here would be uh, this string, dollar $var. And that's how single quotes work here as well. So I can pr print dollar signs and stuff like that, then it will not expand. Uh, getting a bit ahead of myself here, but whatever. All right, we, we want that banner, you know. Uh, figlet f banner snake because this game will be snake i have decided that's what we are doing now so that's what we are doing so snake paste it here in our here document we got a banner now we also want to 
make that border and I will borrow that from my uh, Tetris game here. These uh, box drawing characters I've been using here. We will get back to this in later videos, improve this. But for now, let's just use this uh, simple box here. Uh, and the width is something like that. Then I just copy here this uh, character here, paste it till I got a box. Do the same for the bottom. Paste till I got the box. And if I want to make the box higher, I just du duplicate this middle line here. So duplicate, duplicate, dupl that's good. We got a box. Um, and I like to, to do this. Capital S for start, capital E for end. And then P for player, and then we can do A for apple. Right? So now we got a string here called scene containing all of this stuff here. Next up, uh, we store the content of this string in an array instead, because I like to do that when I want to loop things, because that's what we're going to do now. We're going to loop each and every character in this string to find these special uh, positions, the, uh, capital character positions here. Uh, and then we will use that for our game to know where the borders are and where we want the, the starting position of the player and the apple and so on. So I create a, uh, an array here. It's a little bit overkill, but that's what we are doing. And we can call this uh, array uh, a scene for array scene or something, you know. And then we just take scene here. Notice that I don't use uh, the T option because we, we don't really need to do that. Uh, so now we have an array called a scene. So a scene zero is equal to, that will be equal to the first line, you know, like this. We look something like that. And then we have a scene one is equal to the second line here. Let's see if I can do this correctly here. Will be this and so on, you know. Uh, yeah, we can. Leave it there. I just uh, I, I think it's a good idea to to be a little bit over over clear here uh, because I know arrays can be weird if you don't uh, uh, fully grasp them. For l in exclamation mark a scene at blank chunk do done. Okay, so this will loop now uh, every element in the array. Uh, but I use the exclamation mark here to make it so that L will contain the name of the key. So zero. If I leave the exclamation mark out, uh, exclamation mark out, L will instead be the value of the key. This. Uh, but I want the the number here because that's also the line number. Um, but we want to loop, uh, we don't just want to loop the lines, we want to loop each and every character. So in, for each line, we loop that line uh, and test each character to see if it is an uppercase character. Uh, and to do that, we need to know the length uh, of the line. So let's create a couple of uh, local integer variables here. We have L, which will be a line number, then we Soon we'll have C, which will be a column or a character number or column number in our block here. Uh, but we also have length, which will be the length of each line. Uh, now I think the lines here, or maybe they aren't, but uh, whatever. It's better to do this test, test each and every line to make sure that you get the correct uh, uh, number here. So length is equal to... Uh, but here we use a sharp to get the, the number of strings or number of characters in a string. And that string is uh, the L element in the array. When we know the length, we can loop the line. And here we set C is equal to zero. Uh, while c is less than length, increment c with 1, do. And then we got character, a variable here, uh, 
which again will be a scene L. And this will be like the whole line, uh, you know. So the, when L is zero, a scene zero is this. Uh, but now we just want one character in this line. So we, we create a substring here, colon C, because here we have a loop. C starts at zero, so the first time C is zero, the next time it's one, and so on. And the substring is one character long. So this will make it so that C, C H here will uh, uh, contain each and every character. Uh, one at a time, of course. Um, and what we all we want to know here is um, if uh, the character is an uppercase character. And we can test that by doing this. Uh, if ch uh, regular expression test uppercase character class. So any character from a to z uppercase. Um, or so if this test is not true then we do something and what we do first and foremost is uh, because now we got a copy here of the string variable scene containing this here document we make an array of it so we have like duplicate information here so what we can do is actually a blank scene here to set it to an empty string again uh, because we already got it in in the array here and then we reappend each and every character to, to this uh, string scene again. Uh, if it's not an uppercase character, then we add the same character. If it is a sharp, we add a sharp. If it is a blank space, we add a blank space. And if it is a border character, we add that. So very easy. Scene plus equals ch. We don't even need the quotes here. Um, and then we also continue. Uh, meaning that it will continue with the for loop here. Go back here and take the next character, test if it's an uppercase character, so on. But if it is an uppercase character, then it will not uh, then, uh, go into this uh, block here. And instead, uh, because what we want to do now is not uh, storing the uppercase characters back. We don't want the uppercase characters in our play area. Instead, we just uh, print the space there. So scene plus equals a space but we also want to store these positions and here i like to do it like this create an associative array that we can call pos underscore pos for position uh, and the underscore pos will look something like this you know pos uh, and then we have starting position s x is equal to the column number of s here here it will be uh, 2 and then we would have like sy would be a line number i don't know what that is here but maybe uh, 9 or something like that and so on you know um, and we got here uh, x column that is c here because it, that is the current character so 0 1 and so on you know and y is l the the number in in the array or the index in the array meaning the line number you know um, and we can even make this uh, even more dynamic here uh, we don't have to do like uh, if um, ch is equal to s and this would be one way to write it, but then we would have to make like tests here for each and every uh, uppercase character. And if we would add more, you know, yeah, you get it. Instead, we could just write, because we got the uppercase character that is now stored here in CH. So we can use that here, CH, and that is equal to C. And we'll do the same thing here, CH, Y is equal to L. Right. Um, and here I get this weird uh, error here. Right, good, done is. Ah, that's that linter. I don't want that linter. I don't know why that is active even. C 
sublime right whatever I will disable that so this linter error here it comes from write good which is a linter that uh, tests my writing it doesn't test the code it tests the uh, how, how uh, yeah the, the grammar and stuff like that it shouldn't be active here but whatever uh, okay sorry for that very sidetrack uh, um, but now after we have done this uh, loop here, looped each and every line and looped each and every character in each and every line, uh, we will have a, a new scene variable containing the exact same thing as this scene variable, except that all uppercase characters uh, will instead be replaced by a, a space. But we will also have stored, and this is the important thing, you know, we have stored the, the location for each uppercase character. So what we could do here now, when we have parsed everything, is just print our scene. Uh, and I like to use it with the N uh, flag. Scene. Right. And then I think I will take this uh, array declaration and move it down to our uh, main area here. Uh, to make it like global. And... And we can call our function here, play area. Uh, and instead of hard coding the X and Y positions for the apple and the player, as we do here, we can use our uh, the positions from the pos array now. So pos uh, player X. And then we have pos player Y. And we have pos apple X. And we have pos apple why right let's see if this works there this is our play area here now and it takes the positions from here um, and everything seems to to work fine but there are some small things we need to fix here uh, one is if i try to uh, print the player position in the bottom left corner here uh, you will see some errors we get it it's like located uh one uh column to the left of where we want it we actually don't want it here on the wall we want it next to the wall but it's also located one position above where we actually want it we want it at, in this cell here which is and that is because the the arrays and the string uh, the character positions they start at zero and the first element in the array is zero but the first uh, line and the first column in, in a terminal, this position is actually 1, 1. And that means it's uh, shifted like this. So the easiest uh, way to fix this is to just uh, increment the values we store in the positions with 1. And now it will work. And here now it's positioned at yeah, where we want it. Um, but uh, the borders doesn't do anything, you know, the starting position, the ending position, we never do anything with that, so we can move outside of this box, uh, the box can't contain us, we don't care about uh, being enclosed in a box, uh, despite all my rage, uh, I'm still just a snake in a cage, you know, eating the apple, the apple is eaten, you won. We can just test here in our move function uh, before we update the position we can test that we are not trying to move outside of the box uh, and now we got uh, that so so we can just do x have to be uh, more than or equal to pos start x uh, And it also have to be less than or equal to end x. We also have to make sure that y is more than or equal to start y. And y is less than or equal to end y, ey. 
So this is one big long stupid test here. But if that is true, then we are inside uh, the box and then we update the position. If this test fails, we just don't update the position, so it will not do anything. So now I cannot move outside the box. But we can move inside of the box. So it, it kind of works, but of course, uh, when we are done uh, with the game, we, we will not just uh, don't do anything. If we hit the wall uh, in Snake, then we die, you know, so it's a game over die but we we can take that in a later video but now it kind of works here all i would like to do is uh, center the graphics here in the terminal to do that um, we will use uh, a new method that uh, someone posted here on my channel uh, zachary carbon here uh, posted this cool uh, little uh, one-liner there is uh, this command called stty that uh, I have never really figured out exactly what it does, but it does a lot of cool things. Uh, so STTY space size, it will print the size of the terminal, uh, the lines and the columns. And you can use read to uh, apply multiple uh, um, values to multiple variables on one line at one time it's it's kind of cool and it's very uncommon to see this uh, pattern or, or or way of writing but it's uh, totally fine to do so so we can do read and then the name of the variables we want to to add here uh, and we have the lines here 28 that is uh, let's call it uh, lines and then we have 50 that is calls you know and then you just do a uh, read from a file, but instead of a file, we create a file descriptor pointing to the output of this command here, size. And now if I do echo calls, it will print the number of columns, 50. So we have created two variables and uh, applied these two values to them. It is a bit unorthodox uh, way of writing, uh, but it's... Uh, Kind of cool, so I, I, I want to use it here in our script because we have to know the size of the terminal if we want to center things in it. Uh, we could actually do that here in the init screen, I guess. Uh, we, we might get back to this. Um, can create these uh, global variables here. Declare, or maybe we shouldn't. Ah, uh, let's declare them outside in our global area we have to we next video i think we have to make a one of these refactor videos and create a main function and stuff but whatever let's do that uh, then so here we can create uh, one we can even do it like this declare integer lines calls now as you can see i have a lot of underscore variables here but i like to have it like that uh, read are lines calls from stty size there now we have these uh, lines and calls variables uh, declared here out in the global uh, scope of our our script so we can actually access these variables from uh, within functions as well um, but we also need the width and the height of uh, the block of text we want to center and the, the video he commented on here uh, I, I go much more into detail on how to center stuff uh, in this video so if you are interested in that and haven't watched it you can watch that video because I will not go into any details here instead we will just do this declare i width height width is equal to word count capital L take scene as uh, the thing we want to count the longest line in and then we also have height which is equal to word count lowercase l now now I'm wondering if we cannot do this on a single line as well here can you do um, Word count L level select. Okay, and if we do 
L L. Hmm. Okay. And if we do read um, lowercase is uh, H W W. Echo HH hundred sixty six, yes. Echo WW seventy five level select. Okay, and then it gets the last. Uh, but if uh, var is equal to cat level select dot SH. <laughs> yeah, you can do it like that, you know, and then you save a, a, a couple of commands. So, yeah, we can also see we got a different um, line count here when I added it as a variable because it squashes blank lines, but that's just, that's fine. Mm, yeah, this went a bit uh, off topic uh, in a big way here, but whatever, I, I kind of want to do this now because then we, yeah. Uh, read R W H word count uh, W capital L lowercase L scene because you see here we only need to use one word count uh, command here and it doesn't make any difference at all. It's just this little thing we are uh, doing the word count on. But if it would be a much more uh, a long file and stuff, it's just good to know that you can do things like this, you know? And sometimes these things make a difference. Okay, whatever. Cool. Thank you, uh, Zachary, for, for uh, highlighting this uh, method. Now we got the width and the height, and we also got the uh, width and the height of the column uh, or the terminal. That means we can uh, calculate how much we need to pad each uh, line, how many spaces we want to insert before we actually print the, the, the content of the line. And that is uh, um, horizontal indent is equal to um, Cons minus width divided by two. And then we have vertical indent that is lines minus h divided by two. And we call that v indent. Uh, and then we got h space is equal to print f. Percentage H indent S space, uh, and let's also do V space is equal to print F percentage V indent S space. Or we could actually wait with that, skip that. Okay, so H space here, that's a string that just contains the number of, uh, a number of spaces uh, that we want to pad each line with. Uh, and all we need to do here is to add those spaces to our scene variable uh, for, uh, yeah, for every line in our array, basically. So scene plus equals, H space. 
uh, in the video here on YouTube I use said instead to do that but since we are already doing this loop and stuff I thought maybe this is uh, uh, much better than it actually is um, so this should actually print it now centered horizontally if everything worked It looks kind of weird. It looks kind of weird. It did uh, push it to the right, but did I mix these two up maybe? With word count L. Calls minus V H and then. Something went wrong here with with this stuff. Uh, not sure. B H. Okay, I have to research this a bit more uh, how to do it properly. So let's do this now. Sorry for that uh, sidetrack, but uh, it can be interesting to see my thought process uh, in action. It's horizontally centered. We also want to center it vertically and then we insert a number of blank lines instead of spaces uh, before the block here. We do that before we print it, of course. So, so uh, uh, Vindent can do this print F percentage Bindent S space and then I watched uh, Chris Ochi Pinti's last video and he used uh, TR to do things like this so this should work uh, fine there it's centered in the terminal but now our apple is here our player is here and everything is weird you know the borders are there now yeah because we, we never move the positions of uh, uh, yeah, the, in, in the pos array here. But all we need to do is add the vindent and the indent here to these values and it should just work. Uh, indent vindent. There. Centered game. Box working. Apple eaten. Winning the game. Perfect. And if we just wanted to change the size of the play area here, we could just make it bigger and that should just automatically work here. Amazing, we can add uh, more UI. The problem though is that I cannot use uppercase characters uh, when I'm uh, writing stuff here. That is the big drawback with this method and yeah, that's just how it is here. Uh, if I wanted to, to be able to use uppercase letters, we ha had to make some work around. So, so whatever, no uppercase. It's pretty cool. Um, next video, we make this a little bit more snake-like. So when we eat an apple, uh, the snake grows and a new apple appears at a random position. Maybe even the first apple could appear at a random position and yeah, we, we got stuff to do. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye bye.